is Ohio poised to be the next tech hub, right? And what does that mean for real estate prices? What does that mean for all of you who are investing in the various markets in Ohio for cash flow, right? Ohio, often thought of as the place where you find cash flow markets that never appreciate, right? It's kind of like we got appreciation over here. We got cash flow over here. The investors who invest for appreciation usually don't invest for cash flow and vice versa. But is it possible to finally get both? I think Intel has a little something, or should I say a billion things to say about it. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and today... I want to talk to you all about the Ohio real estate market, right? I got a lot of people who are investing in many cities across Ohio, right? What we do at Holton Wise is we help investors from all over the world invest in cash flow real estate, right? Then we handle the property management, maintenance, construction, insurance. We do it all, okay? And a lot of these people, they come to Ohio, because it's sought as a cash flow market, a low cost cash flow market, right? You invest in Ohio for cash flow. We get a ton of folks from the other tech hubs of the world, right? You got Intel here, right? My tech people, where are my tech people? California, Silicon Valley, right? California is where you invest in for appreciation. But a lot of the prices in California are incredibly high. So when we get Mom and pop investors, people that don't have a lot of money, they want to invest for cash flow. They're typically going outside of Ohio. But one of the drawbacks to Ohio, if you're looking at investing and you're looking at it on a national scale, right? You're trying to figure out like where are the best markets to invest in. One of the drawbacks for a lot of the markets in Ohio is appreciation, right? It's not an appreciation uh, type market, right? It's never one of the markets you look for when you're trying to invest for appreciation. When we're talking about cash flow, people are like, oh, Cleveland, Toledo, you know, all, the, all these places in Ohio, right? Low prices, good cash flow, right? But where's appreciation? Well, that all might be changing soon, and it's got to do with our folks over at Intel, man. Now, this is not confirmed, though, okay? This is breaking news, folks. This has not yet been confirmed, but... The rumor has it that Intel is about to invest a billion dollars in a new chip factory in Ohio, right? Semiconductor chips, okay? As I speak to you all, it's 2022. That is a big deal, okay? You may not like as you're watching this right now like know what a semiconductor chip is it might not be something that's on your radar but i assure you you have probably felt the pain of the semiconductor chip shortage right what have we been dealing with since all the covid issues and issues with uh china and other asian countries out there supply chain issues what have we been dealing with? we've been dealing with major supply chain problems right like me personally i felt the pain on this one right ford my fleet of vehicles here at Holton Wise, I don't know, we got like 20, 25 vehicles, something like that, and they're all Fords, right? Well, I needed a new personal vehicle, one that I drive, and <laughs> obviously I drive a Ford truck. I mean, I'm wearing a Reagan Bush 84 hat. Who didn't know I drove a Ford, right? Well, I was trying to get one of my Ford trucks built for me, and I freaking was in line forever, right, because Ford has a huge shortage of these chips, these semiconductor chips that are needed, right? Friggin', they lost 700,000 units of production. That's 700,000 trucks that Ford could have sold last year that they couldn't because they couldn't get these chips, okay? But Intel, coming to the rescue, folks, Intel is deciding to start investing at home People want American companies to start making these chips, right? Because it's all overseas. And as we run into issues, we get screwed, right? Like this company right here, uh, TSMC, they're a Taiwan chip maker. They have 51% 
of the world's uh, chip production, right? These little chips, right? So if this company has issues, you can't get the chips. And it's not just trucks, right? It's not cars. It's not just trucks. Like everything uses these chips, right? These chips are in your phones, this or that, right? So the moral of the story is we need to get these chips in the good old U.S. of A., right, to continue producing the goods that we need, right? Our vehicles, our cell phones, things of that nature, right? So we need these chips. So in comes Intel. And Intel is down to help. Intel's down for the cause. Intel is building a $1 billion semiconductor plant in New Albany, Ohio, right? That is uh, kind of like in the middle of Ohio, north uh, largest metro market would be Columbus, Ohio, just north of that, right? What we have, according to local reports, the new Albany factory will sit on a 3,200-acre plot of land that has been annexed from Licking County and be built over the course of 10 years. An official commitment to building the factory is expected to come from Intel on January 21st. But if the factory does live up to what is currently being reported, it would be the biggest development in the state of Ohio since Honda built a plant in 82. Folks, your boy Jay Wise wasn't even born in 82. What is that? 92, 2002? That's 40 years ago, man. I haven't even hit 40. That's how long it's been since we've had something big. So this is huge news. This is huge news for real estate investors. I mean, it's huge news for everybody, right? Because it's, it's like nice to like solve some of these supply chain issues that, you know, have been just brewing for quite a while. And then obviously COVID happens and everything just went to hell, right? But this is big. This is big for real estate investors. This is big for those investors out there who are looking at the markets in Ohio and are like, man, the numbers make sense, the cash flow makes sense, but I'm worried that my assets are not going to appreciate over time. Now, I get a lot of questions. Ask somebody who sold $200 million worth of investment property in Ohio. I get a lot of questions. People are like, oh, you know, what's going to appreciate the most? What neighborhood can I buy in that's going to appreciate? What's my appreciation rate going to be? People give me all these types of questions, right? And here's the deal. Nobody has a crystal ball, folks. Like, nobody can actually accurately 100% guarantee you or predict for you what is and is not going to appreciate, right? That's part of the game. You play the markets. You know who like plays the market and tries to figure out what's going to cost more down the road? Guys like Warren Buffett. Even he makes mistakes, right? But when you get stuff right a lot, you become Warren Buffett. So what I'm trying to tell you is it's not like that like there's just this book I could read and I just like know the answer. No, right? It's all speculation, okay? And when you speculate, you're making estimated guesses, right? Nobody's ever going to always be right. And if there are people out there that are telling you they're going to be right, you just, that's a red flag. But what I can tell you is I like to look at evidence, right? I look, like to look at evidence. Like, yo, here's the historical appreciation over the last, like, 40 years. But, like, what do we know that's about to pop off in a certain area that should really stifle economic development, right? So, like, up in Cleveland, for example, right, there's a lower-income neighborhood. I call it the Clark Fulton. Well, it's called the Clark Fulton neighborhood. I call it the Metro Health neighborhood, right? The reason I call it the Metro Health neighborhood is because Metro Health is a huge medical provider, and they're investing a billion dollars into that area, right? Billion dollars. And then we got the Regional Transit Authority, who's also investing another $60 million in that particular area. They're trying to stifle economic development. And then there's also the city of Cleveland, who's giving 15-year tax abatements uh, to people that build new construction homes in these areas. And guess what? It's not limited to just owner-occupants. It's, it's open to investors, and they don't even have to be local investors. It could be out-of-state investors, right? So when I talk to people about the neighborhoods in that market that I feel like are going to appreciate the most, I usually talk about that neighborhood. I go, look, man, I can't predict things for you, but what I can tell you is we got all these neighborhoods and this one over here is getting a billion dollars from Metro, $60 million from uh, the Regional Transit Authority, and then it's got a 15-year tax abatement, right? Put two and two together. If I'm going to make an educated bet, an educated guess, like I think that makes sense, right? So if you're looking all over the country, right, for markets to invest in, you got to make those educated guesses. And right now, I feel like Ohio is a great educated guess, right? 
It's got great cash flow, but it's not the only market. It's not the only state where you can find cash flow that's equivalent to that, though, right? If you're looking at, let's say, 10, 10 places and they all got similar cash flow, dig deeper. What else is going on, right? Well, in my opinion, as somebody who couldn't get a brand new truck for quite some time, one of the biggest pain points in this country right now is getting these semiconductor chips. And guess what? Intel has solved that problem. Allegedly, still allegedly, they haven't officially announced this yet, right? But the, that's what the word on the street is. But that's alleged. I don't know for a fact that it's happening, but it seems that that's what's happening, right? So one of the biggest pain points out there is these chips. So a billion dollars investment, a 3,200-acre plot. There's going to be thousands upon thousands of jobs. There's going to be Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of new tax revenue coming in. What are all these people working at all these jobs going to be doing? They're going to be living in homes, right? Buying homes. So in my opinion, if you're looking at cash flow markets that are fairly similar, a market that's got a huge investment for a product that is probably one of the most needed products in this country right now is a hell of a bet. This news is huge for anybody thinking about investing in Ohio real estate. And guess what, folks? If you are considering investing in Ohio real estate and you want to partner with someone who sold over $200 million worth of stuff and runs the largest scattered site rental portfolio of its kind in Ohio, you go ahead and click the show notes below. Book a free call with my team. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.